Again, everybody, this is Justin Cussman. I'm going to give you a little short tutorial here on how to create some buttons in uh, Adobe Flash. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and start out a new canvas here with ActionScript 3. All right, so now, again, always make sure to set your frames per second and the size of your canvas. I'm just going to work with the defaults in this one. Let me zoom in a little bit here so we can see this a little more closely. All right, so first things first, what we've got to know here is uh, something that I've talked about in a previous lesson was that uh, a lot of these things that we're, we're working with here have to be symbols. And uh, I'm just going to make some really simple buttons using the rectangle tool here. And the first thing to do is draw out or import a uh, some sort of graphic and convert it to a symbol. So like I said previously in another lesson, you can just uh, click this thing and uh, double click it if you have a stroke around it, remember and we can right click it and we can convert it to a symbol. So you've got again three symbols, movie clip, button, and graphic. This one we're going to use a button for, okay, because it's going to be a navigation. So we're going to go to button, we're going to name this, uh, let's name it home button. Okay. All right, so I've got my button created. Again, remember, it, you can tell that it's a, a, uh, a symbol because we've got the uh, blue outline and the circle in the center here. All right, so now that I've created this as a button, one really important thing here I want to illustrate is that uh, different symbols have different kind of internal timelines and states. And with buttons, this is relatively important. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you how to make a rollover and things of that nature. Uh, if we double click on our button, really important premise in Flash. Uh, anytime you create a symbol, double click that symbol and you've got an internal timeline. See, if you notice up here in the top left hand corner, we've got scene one, and we're actually inside the home button's timeline. So if you look down here, we've got some different states. We've got a up state, we've got an over state, we've got a down state, and a hit state. See, this looks uh, obviously fairly different from the regular timeline. So buttons are unique in the fact that they don't have individual numbered frames in here. We've got these four states, these up, over, down, and hit. Uh, and those are specific because we have to utilize those to create things like rollovers and the hit state for the button. So what we, what we can do here, a very simple way to duplicate these out here, is to just insert keyframe in the next uh, empty frame, the over state, insert keyframe in the down state, insert keyframe in the hit state. Now, I've done that because that breaks these up into separate pieces that I can now change if I want. As it would like I'm going to do when I make a rollover. So for instance, here I've got this blue uh, square vector shape here. If I go over to my paint bucket and change this to something obnoxious like this bright green, uh, I can now have a rollover. See, here's my up state and my over state. Now, anytime you do anything like this, you want to test this thing. So I'm going to test it. I'm going to hit Command Enter or Control Enter on PC, and I'm going to test my window here, and I'm going to roll over my button. There we go. See, now I've created a rollover button. See how the little mouse pointer changes into the little finger, and I've got uh, an active rollover. This is really important because uh, rollovers are incredibly useful when you're creating things uh, in navigation for feedback. You want to let a user know that they've rolled over something clickable, and that's a really easy way to do it is to make a rollover. And I can do all kinds of stuff inside here. Uh, in my uh, upstate, I could have text. Say, for instance, I can use my text tool, and I could type out uh, the words home on this if I wanted to. So let's go inside here, and I'm going to type out home. And let me highlight that and change my color over here in my property inspector to white so I can actually see that. And I'm not a huge fan of this font, so maybe I want to choose something that's uh, a little, uh, I don't know, a bit more of a sans serif here. So let's, let's go with like old standard Helvetica. Okay, maybe a bold. All right, there we go. Maybe blow this up a little bit. There we go. So just a quick uh, thing here. When you're making buttons, not a bad idea to keep your fonts the same on all your buttons all the way across the board. Don't vary your fonts up, things like that. Just kind of a quick typography thing. Uh, but for instance, what I could do here is copy this out. So copy. I could go into my overstate. I could do edit, paste in place. 
and maybe change this to a different color. I mean, it's not entirely necessary, but I mean, maybe that's another piece of feedback that I could use for this. Uh, just to kind of illustrate the fact that you can, if I test this again, change the states of things. See, now that is a little bit more interesting whenever I roll over that. So that's your first step in creating navigation is creating the buttons, getting your up, over, down, and hit state. Now the down state, that's another state. If I, if I change this color again here, if I select my color and change this to maybe like an orange. Now this is not entirely necessary, but it's kind of interesting to illustrate. Let me test this again, show you what it does. Up state, over state, down state. When I press down on my mouse, that's my down state. It's another kind of a feedback mechanism. Again, not entirely necessary, but kind of interesting. The little bit more confusing one is the hit state. Sometimes people have a little trouble grasping this. All the hit state determines is where my button is active on my stage. Where's my hit box, as it were, okay? So just to illustrate this, currently, obviously, when I test this, my my hit state is the same size as my button. So when I roll over this edge, see, there we go. I've got this button that I can activate. But what happens if we reduce this? Say I take this and I, I chop out a couple of chunks of this so that I have a much smaller box for my hit state. Watch what happens if I test this again. Command enter. Look at that. Now my button doesn't activate when I've rolled over this. It only activates when I roll over my hit state. Okay, see? So you can do all kinds of different stuff with this later on in Flash. You can even make hidden buttons and all kinds of crazy things in the game programming style stuff. Uh, this is just kind of an interesting way to define a hit area, a hit zone for a button. Okay. Uh, generally, though, you want to make that the same size or a little bit larger than your actual button. So that's our, our basic components, up, over, down, and hit. Now, let's go ahead and make this thing navigable here. So let me go back out to my main scene. <clears throat> all right, so I've got my home button. Here's a very traditional and, and kind of a simple way of setting up kind of a multi-page setup within Flash on a single timeline. Just a quick note, there's many ways you can do this, but this is just one of the simplest and easiest. I'm going to just define my home page to be uh, frame 1 through frame 10. That's an easy kind of a notation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, go to frame 10 and I'm going to insert a frame. Okay, so now I got frame 1 and frame 10, right? That is going to be my home page. Uh, let me create another button. And this button, obviously it's this obnoxious red color, uh, is going to be, let's just, I'm going to call this page 2. Okay, so I'm going to get some text, and I'm going to type it over here, and I'm going to call this page 2. Okay, and obviously it should probably make the text not red so we can see it. Okay, there's page two. Now again, align these out would be nice. I, I'm not going to take the time to actually do that properly, but you really should. You should make sure everything, sure everything aligns. It's a little bit too far to the right. I should fix that. But regardless, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to take this page two and convert this to a symbol and make this a button. So this is going to be a page two button. Okay, right? Now I can go in and I can double click it and I could make my up, over, down, and hit states. So I could go insert keyframe, insert keyframe, insert keyframe. And I could change my rollover to a different color. Exactly what I did on the last button, just kind of reinforcing that. So maybe I'll make this like a horrible blue color. <laughs> All right. So now I've got two different buttons with two different rollovers, right? That's the idea. Now, let's just say I'm going to have page two be frames, I don't know, uh, 10 through 20. Now, what I'm going to do here, though, is create another layer for this. I'm going to call this page 1, this first layer, and then down in my layers, uh, create option here, new layer, I'm going to make one of these called page 2. I just like to separate all the things onto different layers uh, so it's a little bit easier for me to control. So I'm going to make page 2 be, I don't know, again, frames 10 through 20, something of that nature. So uh, what I can do here is I can take this page 2 button, and I can cut this, and I can click on uh, my, my layer that says page 2, and I can edit, paste this in place. So now I've got a button for page 1 and a button for page 2, okay, right here. Now, again, I want page 2 to be frames 10 through 20. So let me go ahead and insert a frame here and insert a frame here. So everything is at least 20 frames long. Okay, see, I've got 20 frames down here. 
So insert frame. Now what we need here is uh, some some navigation, some some actions here to, to to tell it to jump from you know frame 10 to frame 20, things of that nature. Uh, now actually, one thing I need to do though is I'm going to go ahead on page one here. Uh, I'm going to type out some text just to de determine what the heck I'm even looking at here. So uh, page one again is going. I'm going to actually create a new layer and just call it text. Okay. And from frame 1 to frame 10, I'm going to remove out some of these frames. Okay, and I'm going to type in some text so I know what I'm looking at. This is going to be uh, home. Right, just so I know what I'm looking at when I'm labeling this. All right, so again, now I know that when I go to page 1, which is frame 1 through 10, this home is going to show up. When I go to page 2, which is frame uh, 11 through 20, there's going to be no text. Okay, just to distinguish what I'm looking at here. All right, I need one more layer. Now this layer needs to go to the top, and I'm going to name this Actions. All right, really important. When you create any interactivity here, you need to create a separate layer for Actions, okay, especially when we're doing navigation. So what I need to do here is determine on my Actions layer where I want my pages to split up. Now I already determined that, page 1 to page 10. So what I'm going to do is on uh, frame 10 here, I'm going to insert a keyframe okay now what this does is split this off see how it busted my actions layer into two pieces here I've got 1 through 10 and 11 through 20 or two separate pieces here okay now what I need to do though is this is actually isn't enough I need one more right here insert keyframe see how that creates a standalone keyframe right here this is where I'm actually gonna put my my stop script here and I'm gonna put it here another keyframe on frame 20 Stop scripts are frame scripts that tell our timeline to stop at a certain point. If I do not add these in, like as I have now, my page would infinitely loop. Okay, see how my page loops? It's just blinking. It's just blasting through my timeline over and over and over and over again. Okay, no matter if I had these working or not, it would always loop. I need to add a stop script to frame 10 and to frame 20 here. Okay, so what I can do is once I've got this keyframe created on an actions layer, I can go into my actions. Okay, right click and go to actions, right? Or there's some other ways we can do this too. So, but I just want to show you the actions palette here. Now, this is the actions palette. The actions palette is where we add our coding, okay? And there's all kinds of stuff inside here. We've got uh, some instances, find, format code, code snippets, all kinds of stuff. Now, one of these that's really useful is these code snippets. Okay, so code snippets, if I open this up, we've got this little action script drop down. Now that's the coding in Flash, it's called action script. Okay, so what I've got is I want to do something with the timeline. So there's this little timeline navigation folder. I can drop that down and check out what we've got. I've got a uh, action snippet, a code snippet that says stop at this frame. I'm gonna double click this. Okay, oh look at that. Boom, it adds this right here. This is the only bit of code that we need. Stop, we have our little uh, parentheses here, and then I have a semicolon. That is the action to stop the timeline. I can just copy that if I want, and I can apply this to frame 20. Now, look what happens. I've got my navigation window open. A couple things we need to note. Right here, see it has this little A over frame 10? That's my stop script. See if I click it, boom, it lights up here. It even says actions, frame 10, stop. I need to add one of these to frame 20. If I click on frame 20, click inside my actions palette and paste this, I now have an action, see the little A, at frame 10 and at frame 20, which means my timeline will stop at frame 10 and frame 20. Now let's go ahead and test it to make sure it works. Command enter. Now we should see this thing stop at home. Okay, now it blinks, but oh, look at that. See, check it out there. Okay, now I made it a little too short. See, check it out where my text is down here on the bottom. I made it one frame too short. That's why the home disappears. But we know the stop script is working because it stopped. I mean, the home isn't, isn't blinking over and over again. Let's remedy this a little bit. That's why you always test. Let me make this one frame longer. I'm going to insert a frame. Bingo. Now it'll stop on frame 10 and we'll see this home here. So let's test it again. Command enter. Ah, see, there we go. It stops, right? And it's waiting for command. Now these have nothing on them, but it's waiting for me to do something. It stopped my timeline. I'm going to have this jump again to page two, which is going to have nothing on it. Okay. 
So let's just go ahead and make something for page two so I can see that this actually worked here. Let me insert a frame here. Actually, I'm going to insert a blank frame so I can actually see what I'm doing here. So let me insert a blank keyframe. And I'm going to put another piece of text in here that just says page two. So I know what I'm looking at. Okay. So we've got page two, and I'm going to extend page two out to uh, 20 frames. Okay. So now I have home, page two, right? All right. So here's how you do your navigation on your buttons. Okay. And I'm going to show you a different way to get to the code snippets window because you can go through the actions window, which is fine, uh, but there's more than one way to get there. So first thing, I'm going to select this button. Okay. Now I want to add a code snippet to my button. We have our window code snippets. That's the other way to get to this code snippets menu. So if I go to code snippets, look at that. It's the same thing. Okay. So what I can do here, again, I've got timeline navigation, right? click and go to frame and stop or go to frame and play. Now this depends on whether I've got an animation or not. I could go to a frame and stop if I've got no other animation in there uh, or I could go to a frame and play and it could play through my animation and stop at a certain frame. I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, go to and stop just because I don't really need to go anywhere. So I'm going to do or I mean I could do a go to and play it doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm going to double click this. Okay now it's, it requires an instance name. Flash will create an instance name before applying its code snippet. Now, what you want to do here, I'm going to hit cancel on this. Anytime you create a button, you need to put an instance name for this button. That instance name, right up top here on the right. I could name this like home button. And then page two, I could name it page two button. Instances are actually really important for a lot of things later, so you always want to give your symbols an instance name. All right, now I'm going to go back to my home button, double click this code. Look at that, bingo. Adds code here. Now it's saying Flash is going to go to and stop it at frame five. Okay, now I, I, I can have it go to and stop wherever I want. I can have this go to and stop at frame 10. I mean, I've already got a stop script there, but uh, since I use the go to and stop, let's go ahead and make it stop at frame 10. Okay? Or I could do frame one or whatever. All right, next one. Go to frame and stop. Right, see it adds another bit of code in here. This is actually dumping this in frame one up top here, which is fine. But it's it's nice to just kind of keep people on task. If you click a button and activate that button, it'll use that instance name. Right, so always check that instance name on there too to make sure you've got the right instance name on there. Okay, so page two button. Right, go to and stop. I'm gonna have this do frame twenty. Okay, so there we go. Now I can test my buttons. Okay, here we go, right? Does nothing really. This one goes to page two, check it out. So, oh, home, page two. Now I've got some working navigation, see? So each one of these goes to and stops at the frame that I determined. Remember, that's all through your code snippets window here. You go to, you snag your button, and you apply your code snippet. That is in the actions window, right? Bingo, there we go. Home button, okay, go to and stop 10. Page 2 button, go to and stop 20. So there you go. There's kind of a short primer on how to create a kind of a quick and dirty navigation menu. Uh, as always, again, if you needed to see anything specific, just let me know. My email, justincussman at gmail.com. I can make a quick tutorial for you. Hope you enjoy it.